now that we have our file and we already um, exported we want to bring it into substance the first thing you want to do is open the launcher so you're greeted with substance launcher which has all the applications who has substance painter substance designer alchemist and the source where you get most of the materials you got 3d models and the substance integration that um unreal unity lumberyard and cry engine you can just install the plugins and you can export um material straight from substance into those engines and work with them there but we're not going to do those um we're going to do baking and importing the textures in so we want to come into substance painter and press launch and it'll launch the program and i have it launched in another monitor so we're going to jump into the into that and you can see now that this is what you're greeted with. You have your materials. And then you have everything that Substance has by default. You got projects, alphas, all the alphas that Substance bring. You have crunch maps to apply dirt or different effects procedural um nodes your textures hard surfaces like to create normals um skin materials filters um you have your different brushes that you could use um your particle effects which the particle effects is that you select one of these effects and then you go over your model and click on it and um depending on the physics of the particles is just gonna draw on your mesh so you can create leaks and stuff um for your mesh with these um particle effects um tools which they be adding a lot of tools so that you can create bolts you can create stitches and different kind of things to your meshes then these is the main material these are materials that are not mixed they're just raw materials then you have your smart materials where it's a series of um nodes put together and materials put to blended together so to make this material look how it is so this is it says dirt is probably a metal underneath and then it has different grunge maps and stuff all stacked together and then you save that as a preset that way it's called the smart material because it's already put together for you you got smart mask that will grab some of the bake maps that you have and apply edge wear to your models um, you have HDRIs um, to light your models with, and those are cold environments. And then you got the co uh, color profiles. And if you have been in um, Photoshop or you've done photography, these are LUTs. Um, they will change the look of your, your view or your mesh. And that's basically the shelf. So then in this area, we have the properties and the properties is where you have the properties for your brush, um, for your colors. Then you have layers. And if you worked with Photoshop, it's pretty similar. It's all the layers that you're working with, the, the fill layer, the regular layer where it's in blank and then you paint on top of it um your mask options your folders um your filters it's all here then you have texture sets and texture sets is the material that you applied in maya every material that you apply in maya when it comes into substance it becomes a texture set so if you sometimes if you divide your mesh with different um 
shaders, you will have a bunch of texture sets here. So when you select one texture set, those meshes are going to be isolated um, because you're only working with that specific texture set or that specific material. Then you have your settings and this is where you can set the size of your um, texture. Then it also has all the maps and where you can bake maps. And then these icons over here, the first one is display settings and display settings is what you see in your viewport here. You can change um, how the environment, how the lighting affects your model, how the camera settings affect your model. Um, oh, if you can also see wireframe on your model, then you have these and these are the shaders the substance shaders that are being applied to your model so that it looks a certain way. So if you want your model to have opacity, like a glass, you have to set the material in here in substance to have that transparency. And then here's your history and your log. And then to open a project, all we need to do is file new then we set the document resolution we're going to work in 2k so I'll do 2k then select the file and the file is going to be located here or wherever you put your file and then this mesh does not have any maps so if you bake your maps in another program like if you bake maps in Maya or Marmoset or any other program that you can bake maps on, you can add the extra maps here and it will populate the map area and then press OK. And then your meshes are going to be imported. Same thing as you're seeing in Maya. So the first thing you want to do as soon as you come in substance is Check your, your texture list and see we have meshes in different um, texture sets. I really don't want this. So what I'll do is I'll jump back into Maya. I'll jump back into Maya. And come into the hypershade is this icon right here or you can go into window uh, rendering hypershade and this menu is going to come out right now we have two materials we don't want that we want everything on one material so that it becomes one texture set so i'll select everything and apply lambert one now everything has one material and then if you want to delete the rest you can just click on it and delete it but if you have a lot of them then you press delete delete unused nodes and it's going to delete whatever mesh um whatever nodes um you're not using on the scene but this one i think we're using it on the other ones so what i'll do is i'll take this out hide this open this same thing apply close that turn this on apply and now since everything has the number one material right click unused and it'll delete it And this menu comes up when you do right click, by the way. So now that we have this, grab the exported, exploded, file, export selection, replace, replace your, your FBX, export. Yes, replace. 
one thing that I forgot is export settings. For export settings, you come into export FBX. If you don't see FBX, that means that you need to come to window settings and preferences plugin manager, and it will open this view. And all you need to do is come scroll down and find FBX Maya and click load it and auto load and press close. And you once you press it back again, export selection. You're going to see FBX and my settings change all the time because I'm always um, exporting skeletal meshes. So animation and bake are going to be checked for me. But for you guys, you don't need animation. So all you need is smoothing groups, smooth mesh, reference asset content. And then you scroll down. You don't need cameras. You don't need lights, audio and embedded media. Just uncheck all those if they're checked. Then. Up axes. I did Z. Because of Unreal, but it's you're probably going to have Y, which is fine. You can leave it at Y. When I'm since I'm working with skeletal meshes, Unreal wants everything on the Z axis. So I always have the Z axis done, um, set for me. It's not necessary for you guys. Then you just type your name and export selection. Now let's go, go back to substance. So in substance, now that you export it back again, the file. You update this file and you're going to see the update here is you go to edit project configuration and this is the mesh. So you press select, click on the mesh again and open and OK. And you see this is grayed out. So now we don't have uh, another texture set. So now that we have this. We can start working on our mesh. So let's first. Let's try to get a material that looks. Like our stone. So let's type stone. Or materials. Stone. And I downloaded this medieval stone castle wall. The way I did it was if you come to the substance share from here, just log in and you have smart mask, shaders, materials, and you can download whatever material you want from here. You just have to log in with your accounts. And if you come into the launcher, you come into substance source, and then you can type whatever you want. So if I want stone, you can go into stone and you can select whatever stone. I think I selected the stone from this area wall. And then it, all the walls come out. And I put castle wall and it comes up here. And if you want it in sub in substance painter, you just click on the substance painter and it will send it directly to substance painter. So that's how I did. I got this material. So now if you come with this material and you drag it and drop it on the layers tab, you're going to see that everything will have that substance on it. And all we want is the walls. 
because you come over here is only the walls that have it so i'll come back and this is where you start working on your layers so this is the material and this is the basic material and then you have this is a procedural material so it has different um, properties to it so you can assign how many blocks you need vertical blocks random blocks so it has all these properties that you can change but i don't want it on all these meshes so what i want to do is first right click and these are all your options you got a white mask which white shows um the the layer the material black hides it so if i press black everything is deleted so now this is used to mask the meshes so you have your brush up here you have your eraser you have your projection and you have your polygon fill polygon fill is what you use and then when you select this you're gonna see the wireframe and the wireframe that means that you can select triangles faces the whole mesh and uv chunks uv chunks is referred to some of the hotkeys on these is f1 to see your 3d view and your 2d view then you got f2 which is 3d view f3 the uv view and f4 back again Fill chunk, what, what is referring to is the shell. Every shell is this button right here. So we know that this wall is one full shell. So I'll select the shell and click on the mesh. And you can see the whole mesh is spawned. So now you can come and modify the wall. And this one has presets. Dark gray. And now. Vertic horizontal amount. It's at 20. Same thing with the vertical. And you see these plants. I don't like these plants. So vegetation, delete that. This is looking pretty good already. Let's increase the numbers. 46, 30. And it's just playing with your materials. Let's reduce the horizontal until we get something that we like. This looks pretty nice. And you can change the colors on this material. So I like that. So now, if you want to apply another material on top of this, you could do, let's say, stone wall and increase the scale and do the same thing, black mask and assign it to this. And now what you could do is I'm over here, right click on it and then press, if you add paint, you can select the paint layer, select the brush, and then you can paint in black or in white 
to delete stuff or leave stuff in and this is how you paint stuff but you have also procedural nodes so if you delete this and you come over here and you add let's say a generator and the generators are basically those smart masks that i showed you earlier we can let's say do dirt and it mixes the materials together but you see that this needs all these curvature maps so how i said before the first thing you want to do is come into texture settings and click big maps and right now we don't have a high poly so all we want to do is use low poly mesh as high poly and then bake and they'll bake all those maps so now when i add the generator back again dirt is going to have all those maps generated for us and this is how you use all your materials so this is just an introduction it's a substance in the next video we're going to go in and actually start texturing all these meshes until the next video